after a gap of 24 years, the Union flag is going to be flown and worn in space once again. I've been overwhelmed by the amount of support there has been. We couldn't ask for a better ambassador for a human space flight. This is his dream and he's lucky enough to be able to fulfill it. It's really an emotional moment. You really feel and live with them uh, through this moment. Now we're just ready to uh, get on with the mission and get to work. And lift off. Dawn on the snow-sprinkled steppes of Kazakhstan and the rocket that will take the first British astronaut to the space station is making its final terrestrial journey. The Soyuz is 50 metres long and weighs more than 300 tonnes. It takes a beast of a train to haul it from the assembly hangar to its launch pad at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Spaceflight TMA-19M will be the 503rd manned launch from the spaceport. Squeezed into a capsule behind the white casing is a crew of three. Tim Peake is flight engineer two, and it's two days until he blasts off. It's always a happy place to be here, uh, of course, but if it's really a close friend or somebody of your people that you're launching and you have the family close by, it's really an emotional moment and uh, uh, you re really feel and live with them uh, through this moment. Major Tim is ex-Army Air Corps and a former helicopter test pilot with more than 3,000 flying hours. But it's taken another six years of training with the European Space Agency to prepare him for a six-month stint on the International Space Station. He's simulated microgravity in NASA's deep water pool. He's learned survival skills in the Russian wilderness. Experienced extreme G-force in a giant spinning centrifuge and he's sweated for 120 hours in the confines of a Soyuz capsule, learning the manual, then practicing again and again for everything that could go wrong, from a computer glitch to an emergency loss of pressure. I think it's really important to have a high fidelity simulator because the more accurately you can train and the more realistically you can, you can train, then the better you'll do your job in space. And the training that I've done you know, here and in, in Europe, in Germany, in Japan and in the US, of course, it all put it all together and um, it, it really does prepare you very well for the mission. It's the day before launch, time for traditions. The rocket is blessed by a Russian Orthodox priest. The watching crowds aren't left out. The Soyuz is now shrouded by metalwork. It'll peel back in the minutes before launch, revealing Tim's rocket. It's the final touches on years of hard work. Much of his time will be spent running more than 250 science experiments. It's uh, going to be runoff power. Inspiring the next generation of astronauts and space scientists. Young people have already designed the mission logo, chosen the mission name Principia, and, with a bit of expert help, created Tim's space menu. It's 24 hours to launch. Timothy Peak, Великобритания, Yeka. The world's media have come to watch the last news conference before launch. Next to Tim is Russian commander Yuri Malenchenko, NASA's Tim Kopra, then the backup crew. They won't get to fly this time. Tim's wife and two sons are also in Kazakhstan. He's done what he can to prepare them. I've made sure that we've spoken about the training. They've been to see me at Johnson Space Center um, through the space station mock-up facilities. They've seen where I'm going to eat, where I'm going to sleep, where I'm going to use the loo, which is the most exciting part for them. Tim's parents are proud of their son, and what they say is his tremendous adventure. He blasts off with his mum's blessing. 
We used to joke when um, this first started. I said, I wish you could be a banker <laughs> and work in a bank. Then I'd know where you were every day. But no, uh, this is his dream. And he's lucky enough to be able to fulfil it. The morning of the launch. To an old Russian song about a cosmonaut pining for home, it's a short walk to the buses from the hotel where Tim has been quarantined so he doesn't fall sick. He's in good spirits. Goodbyes are never easy, especially when you're four and daddy's going to the space station. At home, excitement builds. A day of events for one and a half thousand children and school teachers in the Science Museum. And at Tim Peake's old school, Westbourne House in Chichester, good luck messages from young fans. He was at our school um, looking at like, the school and stuff, and now we're here and we're watching him, and it's really inspiring. At building 254, the very final preparations are underway. The crew are dressed in their made-to-measure Sokol survival suits. They're checked for pressure leaks in replica Soyuz seats. For six-year-old Thomas and Oliver, who's four, it's a chance to collect another spectacular photo for the album. They're ready, walking out, carrying their ventilation packs that cool their suits. And he's back on board the bus, blown kisses and fist bumps with the boys. The last face-to-face -face contact for six months. For wife Rebecca, it's a relief that he's finally on his way. Great, that's it, done. Now he's he's off. So next time we see him, we'll be floating, which will be awesome. And how are you feeling about it? Great. I can't wait. I can't wait to see it. This has been a long journey, so it's just fab to get to this point. They'll now wait in the capsule for two hours, going through checklists and listening to tracks they've chosen, three each. For Tim, it's Queen, Coldplay and U2. The choice of Lady Gaga causes some amusement. And in the final few minutes, time just to reflect on the journey ahead. Watching a mile away, the boys join in the countdown. Three, two, one, go! Auto sequence initiated. Ignition. A second service tower separation. Booster is igniting, the engine's firing. Ramping up to flight speed. Engine at uh, maximum thrust liftoff. Liftoff of Tim Copra, Yuri Malenchenko, and Timothy Peak on their way to the International Space Station. Five seconds, engines are stable. There's no three people on Earth that are more focused than the crew of the Soyuz there. 60 seconds, pitch. A pitch maneuver 30 seconds in tilts the rocket to achieve the right orbit. And you can feel the vehicle steering. It's a funny, it's, it's as if you're balancing a broomstick. It's an important moment because you're enjoying this uh, sensation of acceleration. Copy, feeling well. 
As fuel is used up, stages of the rocket are discarded, three in total. The stage is jettisoned, then the G drops a little bit, perhaps to about half a G, before the next stage kicks in. Um, so you can imagine lumpy and bumpy. Stage one separation confirmed. It starts very gradually, and then it gets heavier and heavier as you accelerate harder and harder. Five minutes in, and the crew feel a G-force, three times their own weight. The fairing is blown away, and that's the first time you can actually then see out of the window. Two ninety seconds into the minute. Third stage activation confirmed. So gorgeous blues, white, um, white clouds that you can see below, and the black of space. The engine shut off, and you're weightless. Congratulations on orbital insertion. Thank you. Nine minutes into the flight, the engine's cut out with a jolt, and Tim feels weightlessness for the first time. 140 miles up, he's made it into orbit. The camera that's been capturing their progress flickers and dies. The crew still has another six hours before they arrive at the International Space Station. The Soyuz is in orbit at an altitude of 140 miles. Mission Control must now do its sums to catch up with the ISS, orbiting 250 miles above the Earth. A first engine burn moves the Soyuz from its insertion orbit up into a so-called phasing orbit. The process is repeated to move it into the same orbit as the ISS. A side thruster then changes the Soyuz's direction slightly so it can't crash into the ISS. A radar is activated that locks onto the ISS from 100 miles out. Six hours later, Major Tim made the final approach to the ISS. A moment of hesitation and then they docked. After a pause to check the seal was tight, the hatch opened and Tim floated aboard, the first British astronaut on the space station. A moment to celebrate for his family. Then the extraterrestrial phoned home. It was fantastic to watch that launch today. He's a long way from home, but Tim's amazing adventure has only just begun. This is Baikonur House.